Do you need any time to prepare there, Henry? You're right, ready to go. Yours ready? Yeah. Hey Henry, I'll, um, I'll open the meeting and um, so Councillor Naya, you've got problems accessing the agenda. I got another PDF copy. You've Thank you. Okay. Right. Um, firing straight into it. Apologies. If, um, Councillor, an apology from Councillor Manderson. I'll move that. Could I have a seconder, please? Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. No. Hence carried. Right, item three, one point three, um, confirmation of the agenda. Can I suppose it's appropriate that I move that? I'll move it. Can I have a seconder as well, please? I can second. Henry, thank you. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. All right. Um, now, item one point four. Um, I must remind you about the conflict of interest declaration. Um, has anything changed or has anybody want a conflict of interest added? Nope. Oh, I don't need to move and second that, do I? And the minutes, the confirmation of the minutes from the 14th of November 2023. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Mayor, a seconder? Right. Mr. Holyoke, all those in favour? Aye. Against and carried. Is a true and accurate record? Right. And we'll move straight on. It's got all the business out of the way. So we'll move straight on to the um, first external presenter. And I believe the only one today. So he's Mr. Vern Woods. Where do you want me? Mr. Yep. Welcome, Vern. Got up. Um, so I've got my. Some of you might know me from the cinema. Um, I'll reference these in a minute. Ask them around. I've got my radio hat on today. Yeah. Cool. Um, Big River, which is you probably know, has been a long-running local radio station. Here it's FM. Um, wow, that's bright. Do you want to move to one side out of the? Will that pick, pick them up all right or not? Perhaps if you move to the other side. Sorry, Dan. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Um, it's been a lot. It's twenty some, twenty six years, twenty eight years. I mean, we broadcast from various sites around town. And we beam our signal up to Roland Road, which is behind Tururi, um, which has been a great arrangement. Uh, that's come to an end because the landowner wants to build a house on the site, so we can no longer broadcast in there. So currently, we're only operating on a low power, which is a middle, minimal range of about three or four Ks. Um, we need to get our, our full broadcast capacity back up and running. And to that end, this park, basically the whole area, is quite a good broadcast point for this area. Um, I've talked to Bob about it. Uh, potentially, we're looking at up by the machinery centre. The kind of construction we'd be looking at is what you've got there, more or less. Some kind of shed. We, we like the concrete sheds because they're they're quite cool. They keep stuff nice and cool in summer. <coughs> then there would be a power pole, just a regular power pole, with that type of array. You've actually, it's called a dipole, and there's one on the end of the roof here, far end of the museum roof. That's exactly what it is. Um, there is another option that we're looking into as well. Height is everything. 
uh, we would probably need to be some distance from the the comms towers of uh, Vodafone and Spark. There's too much stuff already on the roof here, even if that was an option, I think. So we were looking at the top of the hill up by that, where there's a little water tank um, by the machinery uh, outfit. That was in theory. I mean, you know, we're just, a, we're, this is, I'm just telling you that would be nice maybe if we could do something there. The um, station is a community uh, owned charitable trust, always has been. Uh, we are looking to improve and uh, build on the relationship we have with council regarding civil defence. Uh, one of the one of the problems with that was that our transmitter being on the other side of the river, when there was a power shortage or power cut, it was a low priority. Um, the, the urban area is generally a higher priority for all sorts of reasons, meaning that the power doesn't go out for very long. But you know you would need generators and so forth to get a consistent uh, signal if there was a major catastrophe or something. Um, so that's it, really. I mean, I'm just putting this to you as a for your thoughts, and um, it might be a categorical no, can't do it. That's okay. I mean, obviously, we are just interested in what you think. Uh, this this site here is a particularly good site because it, it angles FM broadcast works really well over water. It bounces on water, and so we have really good access to rural wire which was a problem over there because over there, we, if you draw a straight line from there to rural wire and those flats and that whole area, you've got some very large lumps of basalt in the way. Mangarahu, Toka Toka, Bergen's Hill is all quite big and that will block anything. Um, so as you can imagine here, we've got fantastic aspect into town, great aspect down the river, great aspect up the river, and because of the valleys of the Kaihu Valley and even the Waihui Valley, good push that way. So it's a good site. We actually engineered it when we first looking for sites. We got um, what they call engineering, which is a, they basically pinpoint a position on a topographical map and do a, um, a plot, a sort of, conception of where you'd be able to broadcast based on the topography. And this was better than over there, but, and probably for the same sorts of reasons, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a go. Plus we were offered that for free. We just kind of, the guy said, put it on my runoff, no problem, Lynn Lulich, great bloke. Um, don't think there's too much else to tell you really. We were based in the, in the old dairy factory. Uh, we would, it would be beamed, we use a, what is a microwave link that just beams a direct line straight to a receiver on the pole, which is just a little little thing like a like the old um, VHF type antenna. And uh, it goes down into the, into the shed, um, transmitter, power amp, back up the spout to the dipole, broadcast out. There's very little in the way of it's not like the cell sites where there's, you know, some people have concerns about them. We're much, much lower power, much lower power. They have four, three, four, and five G to be, you know, and we're we're way down on the low, low part of the spectrum. Ninety eight six, I think we are at the moment. That's about it. Any questions? I can ask. You. Yeah, Councillor Mayor. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, so you're aware there is a telecommunication site here. Of Bell South New Zealand, do you know that? Of who? Bell South New Zealand. Uh, there is a lease I'm just looking at. Uh, maybe Anin can. Uh, are you aware or not? Well, there's a whole lot of <coughs> communication. Uh, Sorry. There's a whole lot of devices here. Yeah, it seems like Rima's on the far end of the roof. Yeah. And that would be a concern. We have to make sure. We would have to find out what frequency they they're. Yeah. Sending on, and as long as we're well away from that, and by that it can be if they're on 98 and we're on 96 or something, or vice versa, that would be yeah. okay. So, I got my question was obviously exactly that um, if there's interference which um, neither helps you nor them, that's right. Would you please investigate that first? Or, well, that would be a thing we'd do, yeah. I've, I've actually 
I've got a guy who can do the, this this concept of engineering with the topographic maps. He he can do that without. He's got the software, so he can just do it. So we get some idea of how good it will be. Then there's a whole question of interference, as you say. Uh, the only one I think that would be a real problem potentially is Rima, and if we're too close to them, then we can't go there. That would that would negate. Too close as in distance, or too close on the spectrum. Sorry, yeah. ninety-eight. Say with say they were ninety-eight two, and we're ninety-eight six. It's probably okay, but I could understand if they were they objected to that. But, but as you mentioned before, the telecommunications is no interference with you whatsoever. Well, Victor. It doesn't mean that Vodafone and, and Spark wouldn't object because they're prone to just objecting, really. You know, they might not. And certainly up on that hill somewhere. The more the more thing that Bob pointed out was you're trying to sort of it's the visual <laughs> of the mast and gear and all that stuff. And hey, do you want to talk? Yeah. About that? Yeah, well through through the chair. Um, my concern was one, the concrete building and how that looks. I mean, in our um, long term plan, where there's a certain amount of uh, or guidelines towards the look of the park. So that's one thing that is a concern that I think we need to discuss. And um, as far as the poll goes, how, how would you get power to it? It would have to be dug in, brought from wherever the nearest power source was, trenched in. I mean, you know, I mean, I, the, the whole radio is entirely and very professionally pitted out. We've got, we use Broadtech, who are the nationally known Broadcast technicians in Auckland at great cost, but but you know the, nothing's done half pie. Yeah, I mean, having said that, we'd get the local power board to try and we will try and get a free poll off them. But when it comes to the electrical part of it all, that's all going to be done and signed off, and you know it'd be yeah. like legit. So the, my concern with that was, was the structure, but then. Um, as Vern and I talked about it, it's the other thing, or an, another thing in the plan for this park is that it be used by the community. And this is a community radio broadcasting to the community. So, I mean, it's, it seems a pretty positive thing, right. point of view. One of the things that could be done with the shed, particularly if it's a concrete or a steel type. It doesn't have to be concrete, but we'd prefer something secure and preferably something that can be kept reasonably cool, particularly in summer, is, you know, you, you bury it into the back of the hill somewhat. We talked about that a little bit, eh? And just, you know, where that tank is, don't put it right on top, put it sort of off to, towards the, where the scrub starts again. Bury it down in it a bit and access it from the behind. The problem is, I mean, that's not the problem, that's fine, that may be, but you still got the pole. The pole's got to be a pole and it's got to be high. And that's where your visual, so called visual pollution comes into it. And that's probably the thing you've got to consider most. Well, you know, if, if you. It's a conversation point. Yeah, yeah. There's no getting around that, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, sure. um, just just one more question. Mm -hmm. So um, I was suggesting you talk to everyone before you finally come to Consley for something. Um, so as Rob pointed out, there might be some concerns uh, with the other body um, which we have, um, and Henry can probably elucidate on that. Put uh, the other one, um, the pass site, in terms of having anything uh, with the waves and all. You reckon? Well, I would say no. There's no sort of 
You mean like some kind of electro electro? Well, well, all uh, uh, culturally, I'm saying culture might be an issue or not. Speak to that. I, I, I'm not aware of anything, but um, you know, we're not looking to go anywhere. We'd be quite happy to be way back there. It's actually the highest point, way back anyway. Okay. Thank you. The, um, we are on the verge of potentially going into a relationship with Ngāti Whātua. Um, that's sort of being talked about at the moment. As a, as a charitable trust, the radio has struggled in recent years. <clears throat> and um, one of the options that, one of the sides of the whole thing that Myself and Anaru Tana, who is no, no longer with the radio, although he still keeps a ear to the ground, uh, was to form some kind of relationship with local iwi in some form. So initially it wasn't local, it was going to be with um, Pane Harawira's crowd up in um, Kaitaia and those stations that he's got because of the content they could provide as much as anything. But that hasn't panned out. And we're looking for a more substantial partner in the in the trust, if you like. It's all very unworked out yet. I don't quite know how we you know, we, we're not we can't just sell to someone. We don't want to do that anyway. But you know, we're not we we're we're a charitable a community charitable trust, so we can't just, you know, sell up and grab the money and leave. It's, it can't go like that. So we want to retain the community thing with it. And what very preliminary talks we've had with Ngāti Whātua, but work, something could happen there. You know? um, that said, I still don't, you know, we're not wanting to step on any toes culturally or anything like that, obviously. So um, anyway, that that was the plan. It was more up the far end. So I've got a couple of questions from me. Then how how big is this um, is this building? What's the actual dimensions of it? Or have they been? So the building's like a uh, we we've been using a dangerous goods shed. Yep. Um, we had a really nice one. The one up on the Royal Road is massive, and I found out that no trucks can lift it. I seem to recall that we did slide it off. Okay. So it'll be a case of getting a big digger and sliding it for the whole palaver. But we had a really neat one down at Tamaiti. And um, that was our other broadcast point. And it's, it got pinched. Oh, no. So I'm, I'm going to go down and have a little bit of a chat to a few farmers around there and see if anyone knows, if anyone's got an interesting looking meat safe or, you know, killing shed or, because they're all used for that sort of thing or putting sprays in or, you know, see if we can find it because politely ask for it back because it would be perfect for wherever we end up. So it's it's a small it's a smaller shed like in that photo. Then you eighteen hundred by eighteen hundred. Yeah, that would do. Okay. And probably the one we've got, even the to mighty one, is probably bigger than what we need. You just need a rack in it. It needs to be able to be kept cool, it needs to be secure, and it needs to have a rack set up with a couple of things in it. So rather than a building, could it be a cupboard with an opening doors or not? Conceptually, sure. As long as it's secure and waterproof. Like if somebody's to come up there and work on it, would they work there for an hour or something inside it or? Ideally, but not necessarily. Okay. We used to have a traffic light box, which is what you were describing. So okay. Um, before we got the tanks, we had a, a literally, you know, the traffic light boxes they used to, I don't think they, I don't know what they do now, but yeah. this is a roadside box thing and you just open up, it's a cabinet. And um, they were right, you know, the great home for spiders, which used to walk across the wrong components from time to time. Uh, you tend to have a separate one for your meter. That's sort of, and then we ended up using the traffic light box just for the meter for our power. Right. Then we'd have the tank, we've got to put our gear in it. Okay. 
And the other thing is, you mentioned about funding and all that. Have, have you got the funds for this, or you've got applications waiting to be? Applications waiting. Or, in the yeah, process of, or have been approved waiting on? No, there been can, applications in the process. Right at moment. We've been looked after very well by funding agencies over the years. We've got a long story now, too. That's the other thing. Um, always helps. Is there anything from civil defence and emergency for? Not at this point. Um, that's a, another discussion. Uh, we want to try and get that happening because that's been in the sort of, as I say, it was kind of stymied slightly by the need to have generators over there and then someone to turn on the generator unless you spent lots of money and had a automatic click on. But, you know, a lot of that stuff that was so expensive years ago is now not expensive, you know, yep. time moves on. Um, I mean, I basically came back on the radio. I, I'd got away from it. I come, came back to try and make this move forward because they were having trouble, largely because a lot of them aren't, haven't done this before, whereas I was there at the beginning and me and one or two other people just sort of did it. Um, it was very bits of wire and string and tape, you know, kind of thing. Any great stuff. If nobody else has got any further questions or anything further there, Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, I'll take off if you don't mind. I'll get back to work. Thanks for hearing me up. Thank you. Cheers, Ben. I'm assuming this will be something that we forward to the council for approval. Would this be right? The committee would recommend to council. Yes. So we've got to make a recommendation at some stage, but it's not going to be today, is it? No, I suspect what we should do <coughs> is ask for a proposal where he does get you know, the engineering assessment done on mm -hmm. frequencies and channels and line of sight and uh, obviously there'll need to be some consultation you'll need to undertake to make sure that all the affected parties are uh, supporting the, the idea. So yep. there's a bit of work he'll need to do. Yeah, so we're going to start ask him to go down uh, a task which could create some expenditure that we need to do prior to that. Get a provisional approval of it or... I think if the committee, through your chair, if the committee are generally in support of it, then <clears throat> we should inform um, the radio station that yeah, the, the, these are the next steps that you should do. Bring it back to the committee. Um, committee can decide, debate, and then recommend to, to council, provided there's sufficient um, information there. But I will also just need to check whether any resource consents are required. So, is this something we put on the next meeting's agenda to discuss? Or yes, yeah, so staff would need to do a report for it. Okay. To the chair, I think it's. Um, quite early days, so he has to bring a whole lot of information. He will reach the council and then the council will give us. So, I mean, if we, if we prejudge that next meeting, he'll be able to give something. Yeah, I'm aware of that, um, Council Mayor, but I just don't want it dragging in for another five or six years. Um, you know, he's got a limited time up there. Um, I want something in place that quickly on. We, do, we don't meet every month or not every fortnight. Only meet once every three months, so I'm I'm on a feeling that we get this thing rolling one way or another, so we can decide. What what does everybody else through the chair? Um, I think it's a good thing, and uh, as long as there's no cost to the to to the to us, and it's, it's, he's asking to come and site the antenna in his concrete shed. As long as all the costs are on him, on his, on, on the radio station, we, 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 if we're open to um, the idea of uh, accommodating it up here somewhere, it's not going to be of an eyesore or, you know, then that's where I'd, I'd support that. Um, wouldn't be anything culturally significant to to a, to a tenor. I mean, in tenor, unless, unless he's going to bring them back to life or something. 
I think Radio Ray, Ray Rima is probably more likely to do that than Big River, but so. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I can't see it being an issue there. And, and um, I don't know, the only question what I should have asked Ben was um, the, the height. Of it. I mean, it was like, it looks pretty up there, but I don't know the height of it. Well, he did mention a power pole, didn't he? Yeah, yeah power so, pole. So that's not a power pole, but it's, I mean, if he's looking at a standard power pole, it's, I mean, there's heaps of them around, you know? Is that something I need to, um circulate, get, get that information from Vern myself and then circulate to the committee members. Would you like the... that? That shed there doesn't look, I mean, it's not, it doesn't look ugly. It looks quite, I mean, it looks solid, but it doesn't look ugly, you know? And I mean, well, the only thing I can see as a, as a, as a hindrance is that, I, I mean, I don't know if it's happened up here in the past, but um, tagging, you know, it looks like a, a good sort of tagging sort of shed, you know, being concrete, but so with some suggestions about putting it in the bank and all that, I mean, hey, that can be all resolved. I think we'll go in behind the tank, wouldn't it? He's saying cut it into the, into the hill. Bank. I think wait forward here, uh, Chair, is that maybe um, officers draft up a letter for you to send to uh, mm -hmm. outlining um, what he should undertake in terms of due diligence. Yep. Uh, present it back to the committee, um, we can then do an assessment or before uh, the next committee bring it back through an officer, myself, for example, we can assess whether any consents are required. Yeah. Um, but he would need to do the majority of the work in terms of the height and the visual assessment. How does this thing sit in the ground? Uh, does it interfere with any of the other uh, antenna that are on? So uh, all on the grounds here? Yes. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'm agreeing. I think we'll, we'll do that. The, the main concern, like I mentioned before, is the fact that we only meet it once every three months. So we can't if we can't delay till next week or whatever. We we've got to get things moving on this because before a year we'll be gone. Forward, really. I mean, the operations are over. I mean, we, we, if we agree today that we see it as being a good thing, we just keep keep the keep the wheels turning. Okay. Totally agree. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I agree too. All I want to make sure that um, before we say yes, is it feasible? You got to check out with all those telecommunication, all those people. Yeah, well, we've already answered. Like as long as there's no costing on us. Yeah, yeah we're fine. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm I'm okay with that. Thank we're, you. We're not saying put it up there. We're saying we are agreeing to it. Continue on the investigations. Yes. Yes. So um, my my feeling is that they are investigating another site as a as a plan B. So they'll be doing this anyway for that. Yeah. So yes, um, we'll fire ahead with that. Right, we'll move on from that. Everybody's happy. We'll move on to item four. Um, Jesse. So, yeah, um, so Jessie is the infrastructure officer for parks and open spaces. Um, can I have a mover to have her ash, Councillor Nair, and a seconder, Holyoke? Hey, Jessie, the floor is yours. Good, everyone. Good um, I thought I'd go over a report briefly this time. Um, so, this is an operations update for the months of October 2023 through to January 2024. Um, so, routine works as per normal. There's been no actual change to routine works um, at the park over this period. We did have our shutdown, well, our holiday period in this report, but uh, our mowing contractors continue as usual over that period as well. Excuse me, Jesse. As we're going through these items, do if the committee have questions, do you want them asked on that particular point to get over and done with, or do you want to wait till the end? Um, we do it as we go. It might be easy. okay. Cool. Yeah. So if if the item does pass, I don't want you bringing it up again, please. This, so, Councillor May, you have a question. Re Thank you, Chair. Routine works. Yes. Um. So. No, I have a question, obviously, that the way it is um, presented, it's an ongoing thing. And um, being a counselor, I've been bombarded by so many people around this. 
this not happening. So when you say um, everything is moving smoothly, so you order some works and uh, can we know when it was ordered and when it was not done? Because we have no clue if, if it was ordered a year ago, um, if, if you get my point. So we, we can get some better information in terms of why it's not happening rather than it is happening because the waters, the palm tree and all those things. And I've sent some photos also. So I'm very concerned about uh, status is green, but actually the things have not happened. The dates may be moved forward. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern, uh, if I make it clear. Thank you. Yeah, so, so that first one there, the, the turf maintenance mowing, I see it's graded on the back paddock and scheduled for mower in March. And I can, we can see that it was done. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so there was a, there's a big pile of debris there. Is that the scrapings or something like that, or? It's from the works on the mountain bike tracks area. That's where that. Is that going to stay there, or will that be removed, or? We remove it. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks, it just looks remarkably so much better already. But yeah. Yeah. But we're going to have a massive flourish of regrowth now after this rain. But. Uh, yeah, so is it something that you, the team can keep on track with or? So that's why they're doing that, um, why they got the digger in there, because the ground levelling was was no good to get the four wheel drive mower into those areas. Excellent. So we've gone to do a bit of levelling and then we should be able to get the four wheel drive mower in there to keep on top of the maintenance. And that is, he is pricing a, um, a price so we can make a variation to the contract to bring those areas into the contract because they're not currently part of our maintenance contract. Yeah, so they're ad hoc. We would have had to order day works whenever we wanted work done in there. Mm. It wasn't part of routine works. I, I'm sorry, carrying on. Uh, I was actually approached about when you were doing it um, in terms of discharge of the storm water, you were looking for a source and the machinery club told you were trying to connect to the existing one. And then they gave a solution of giving um, some kind of hole where the water goes in. So some new thing was created. So all I'm trying to say being, I mean, rather than people telling us, if you can give us a better detailed picture of what is happening and what is not happening, what are the challenges, it'll be much appreciated. Yeah, I think we've got the picture of that. So we'll just carry on going through item by item or we're going to get lost. I, so so that, that's just that first one. Yep. Yep. Locking of gates, what to do? Um, what about our walking tracks and all that? And oh, yeah. So those so those. those items are just our routine works, which come under our maintenance contract. So these are just ongoing scheduled items, part of the contract. So they should just be done every month as per usual. Um, so grade D, I believe we've provided the grades in previous reports. Yep. There's our grade for up here, uh, walkways. Well, it's only walkways, really. Those are just our walkways throughout the park. They should be doing usually spray maintenance and any remedial work, such as top up of stones, um, leveling. Um, park points, that's the, well, the picnic tables. So they should monitor those. They should be, they should have a cleaning once a year. And I believe the cleaning was done in September. Um, yeah, those are the only park points up here. Yep. Locking of gates. Yep. So we finally have entered into an agreement with our security company to just at this point open and close, not lock the gates at the park, the main gates. Um, so that has started. That started in the actual gate locking started in December, I believe. Um, and the agreement was sort of in place. October onwards before we got the locking implemented. So that means if somebody accidentally gets locked in here, they can get out if they've got yes. sort of a, a brain. Sort of. Yeah, and we still, yeah, still have the issue of the museum and the processes on how, when they have events of them getting out and also people living on site here and emergency vehicle access. So that's the reasoning behind not locking them at this stage. Um, mm, it's a problem at the moment. 
how we work around that. So, sorry, so, so through the chair, um, I, I got an email from museum today, so which I passed on to, I think Anil, you got it too. Oh, you so say? on the gate also, they mentioned uh, the locking part here. I mean, maybe you can go through it later and come back um, because it just came like an hour ago. So the museum had a few things on which has not happened as well. Yeah. So the, the locking of the gate, what does it mean? I think it's one of the number two is blocking. Okay. So just going back to the closing of the gate, a lot of people would drive up, 90% would drive up and see it closed and uh, it's locked and turn around and go away. Are, are we finding that's what's happening? Um, so the museum has reported vehicles coming up, but that's probably before the gates are closed. So they still are. I haven't had reports or any feedback of cars coming up when they're closed. Um, yeah, so it's a bit hard to monitor it. So we'll just wait and see, yes? Yeah, that was the thinking, is if they're closed, like they are putting the latch over, putting the latch in and the pins in the ground, it's just not padlocked. Right. So the gates are physically closed and the hope is that will deter people from coming up because they have to get out of their car and yes. open them. Maybe there's a good idea to um, put a sign, you know, some people open and then they don't close it. So it remains open because it's not locked anyone. Say I'm walking and I just open it. So some kind of. Mm. Yeah, we don't want to advertise that it's not locked, but. Mm. Well, it's going to be seen it's not locked, right? No, but if you put up a sign and say, um, please close the gate after you've gone through, mm. I, I don't think we're going to achieve what we're wanting yeah. to achieve. Otherwise. It's just a thought. Yeah. So no, it's Thank you. Been locked. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something we probably still need to look into. It's just, it's multiple parties um, and it's quite difficult. Maybe easier now talking with police because the office wasn't open. Um, so you actually have to schedule in and the same with the fire station. But that's something we can still look into is getting them locked. If... It might, might be just a wait and see. We'll see what happens in okay. three months here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all the works, old golf course walkways. So we did some vegetation uh, removal along old golf course walkway, um, just to improve vision and increase the um, visibility on the exit of the track. Uh, we do have a, some further tree removal planned at that at that site in March. Anything on that one? Um, ordered works, planting plan received by Tiarai Nursery. So they were the ones that did the um, spraying back in September. And I approached them for a planting and maintenance plan. So that draft has come through. It's still under review. If we would like to proceed into the agreement, um, we're still in sort of discussions back and forth on what the team are able to provide. Um, so that's not, it's a draft at the moment, it's not signed. Um, stakeholders advisory group. So the museum approached uh, one of our community officers, advisor officers, about the reestablishment of a, of a park advisory group. I understand this was used to be in place years back and um, yeah, this discussion is been brought back to the table if we can re-establish that. I probably won't be operations led. That would probably be either um, one of our community advisors or possibly our property officers leading that group um, with support from parks. And how do you visit that to pan out, Jesse? Do you visit that, say, once every second meeting they come and just give a verbal presentation or a presentation to us yeah that, that will have to be determined um yeah i'm not sure or, or we feed back through the operations report if they would like to feed back themselves because it would i would i see it as a collaboration and you know we'd sort of get those things ticked off and it would just be an update to the governance committee I, I have mentioned before, especially to you, Henry, to to um, to establish that relationship with with the um, um, with I, I can't pronounce probably Po Tuo Te Orangi 
path site and, and people who look after and administer that. Um, I, I think they've sort of been left out in the dark a little bit here and um, we haven't had much feedback from them. Um, so do you think that could they could um, re-establish that networking there? Um, I understand that may be a governance connection mm -hmm. because those two committees should be updating each other. Um, but we could bring Iwi into this stakeholder advisory group. So do they have a governance committee? Uh, no. No, I don't either. This, they're waiting for something, I understand. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, pro it's, it's one where the, do, we, do we encourage them or do we step aside and let them um, still? Through the chair, I think we just, um, because they're doing their thing, we're doing our thing. But if we show, uh, you know, some sort of communication as far as meetings that we hold, what, what, you know, what comes out of it, then it's out of respect, they should be doing the same back about what their, what their role is for Pokerangi down the bottom here as, as representatives of that part. I think um, we just show that, you know, as far as communication between the two parties, governing parties, we say, well, this is when we have it, this is who attended it, this is what we you know, delivered out of it, and whether the action points or whatever, at least they can see that we're actually doing something, because we, we, we haven't seen anything from their side, but have you? Yeah, I agree. I, I think we should be, um, we, we should definitely be having that showing that the door is open and yeah. the bully's on, if you know what I mean. That's it. Yeah. Show that, that we're open to any one of their representatives coming to sit in or vice versa if they, but we haven't had an invitation, so we, we get in first. Um, through the chair, wasn't um, there two councillors on that? Ready? I don't think it can. Oh, there are. I, I yeah. have Councillor Paniora and Councillor Erin on Wilson's. Okay. Yes. Are both the committee? And I thought I was as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, right, yeah. But I've had no communication. Um, my understanding that the two councillors would need approval from the Department of Conservation uh, from the Minister um, in order to be seconded or whatever onto the onto that committee. Um, so have they sat? Has the committee sat? I'm, I'm supposed to be part of it, but I have not. I, I, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure on the process, but I understand that is the hold up is Okay. Having those appoint, they can't sit until those appointments are completed, which is through that process through the minister, which I think is a lengthy process. Okay. Through the through the chair, is that um, is that uh, so on them the the other committee to get that sorted? If so, yeah, that. Yeah. Well, uh, well, okay. So, if that's the case, is that the reasons why they haven't been sitting? Yes. Okay. Because okay. they're not officially appointed. So, out of curiosity, I think um, we we get in still with, you know, uh, explaining to them how we've been running our committee, mm. you know, um, process of we meet quarterly. This is what we're up to, and so that they're aware of someone's actually taking. You know, initiative and the bull by the horns, and you know, carrying on with the mahi up here, yeah, with operations, which you guys are, yeah, um, and 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 like I say, to to invite them if they choose to, you know, one of them or a representative if they want to come, the doors open. Well, through chair, if I may add, I mean, we're trying to do all good. I mean, they, these two committees was together at one point. So they are separated now, and it's not by statute they are in motion. Rob Harding, he is part of both committees. 
what more communication you can ask for? Rob knows what goes on in India. Mm. Uh, through the chair, uh, it's like there's Komar to sit on that on that committee, like uh, Rex. Mm. And if the invitation's there for him to come here, yeah, you can't say he wasn't invited, regardless of whether Rob's here or not. Totally mm. agree. It's, it's about yeah. being respectful to those Komatua that sit on that committee. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you, Henry, and, and, I, and I think we should, uh, you know, just be humble and and, yeah. and say that. So you respect the but, water that's there. So through the chair, you the form. Me, yeah. irrespective of what's gone up, the water that's gone under the bridge beforehand, we need to make sure because at this stage is a year and a half, if not more, eighteen months plus, getting close to two years of nothing being done down there. And yeah, so we've council and I. No, that's all right. What I'm saying, it's a, it's a good idea, but all I was saying, how it's going to function if it's not there. Yeah, uh, Rick was in the meeting this morning as well, so I'm on the other committee. Yeah, and through the chair, I just say the other thing is, is if just say he took it up and he he turned up, well, he might be able to help with. You know, prepping that down there with the other committee. I mean, you know, there could be some wins there. There could be some benefits there for us, mm. uh, and it just might just need a little bit of a invitation or push to to get them here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yep. The chair, just one last add to that one. Since since that committee isn't established yet, my my plan is to um, put reports through to the Mana Whenua Hui's, which are held quarterly, just to give Ewe an update. Um, of the park as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, GIS mapping. So we are working on some digital maintenance mapping mapping for the park. Attachment A in the report. And that's just a draft at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's just a good visual guide for our contractors and operations and our stakeholders, our leaseholders as well. Are those two major leaseholders, the museum and the machinery club, are they both seen this map? <clears throat> no, no, this is just draft at the okay. moment. I haven't put it out to them yet. Yeah. But they do have the areas in their lease yep. um, identified. Uh, Wattle tree removal. This is always been an ongoing issue. Uh, we have started, we started in late, late January. Um, so the team have been through. Uh, there is further more to go in, uh, down in Old Mount Wesley. There's quite a few large standing ones down there, um, but it has started and it'll be an ongoing issue. So has it been a bigger task than what they thought? Um, they weren't too worried about it, actually. Um, but yeah, so we'll get them back and that'll probably be a continuous maintenance sort of item forever. <laughs> um, walkway improvements. Oh, so that's just some improvements I've done as ordered works to our maintenance contracts. Um, just some, these were identified through a compliance audit and I took some of the walkways around here. So they completed all that in January. Um, so that's all I had for completed works for those months. Planned works for going forward. Uh, as you can see, we've got provisional costings for the wider mountain bike track area to bring this under routine maintenance. So I've requested those options. Our contractor is working on those costs at the moment and Hopefully we'll get them back to me well, February's past, so March, hopefully. Um, Clark Road walkway weed controlled. Uh, so this was just identified um, some spraying is needed for the Park Road walkway, which is the stairs down in the corner. That's not actually in the park boundaries, but it's a link to the park. So that's been um, authorised. Uh, now they're around the weed spraying, so the weeds are you know, the the growth is quite out of the control at the moment. So we're going around the stormwater pond that needs some additional spraying, and we've managed to mow mow some of the areas which has knocked weeds back. Uh, the Phoenix Palm at the entrance, so 
approval has been given. We're just waiting for the schedule removal date of that. Did you have a final costing on that? Uh, it, it didn't differ much from the original budget. No, it didn't differ much. Uh, we may have added work on, which was a clean up of that entrance fence, that fence area. Uh, I think there was some wattles in there and some privet. So we've asked them to do that at the same time for the new traffic control for that, for the Phoenix Farm removal. Uh, the recycling table, I met with the contractor. We've decided it probably isn't the best location at Harding Park, just due to aesthetics of the microcarpa tables that are already in place. So we'll probably utilize that recycled one somewhere else. Grade retaining wall, that's the corner down here. We got costings back for that and it was very high. So probably just need some feedback if that is something useful, use want done. How much um, damage has been caused to that statue? Do what people just drive into it? I, I don't get any notifications of damage to it. So I, I thought it was damage to the. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I've been off the. But from the initial one, which was last year, I think I, I haven't. I haven't been notified of any other instances. Or was it damage to the grass deep? It looked like I remember they looked like they drove off that bank and they've hit a few of those rocks. Mm. So mm. I think we did discuss planting could be the other option for that corner. Some low lying hedges that would stop people driving just off the bank. Certainly the cheaper option, wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. I don't think if they're going to drive off each of a cliff, I don't think planning is going to stop them. <laughs> I think they yeah. the problem. Okay, thanks. And more <laughs> an expensive retaining wall. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Midway sign. So we do have a um, sign that's similar to the Welcome to Dargaville signs. Um, this one depicts Harding Park, um, which is why we thought it would be appropriate for it to sit up here. Uh, we're just trying to confirm a location. Um, they just, can be lit up as well, which was another discussion. One thing I will ask about the signs. So in, in our audience here probably know what I'm going to ask. The sign to the old Mount Wesley Cemetery, that's fine. But then they put a fence up in front of it. You can't read the sign. <laughs> Have you noticed that or not? I think this. The boom. Yeah, you can only just. Inside the boom. Inside. inside. Wow. Then they've got to put the fence up so you can't actually read the sign. I'm just wondering whether that needs to be raised up or. Or put outside on that road. Yeah, road. just. Uh, it's just. A strange thing. It's like one of those engineering disaster things you see on on Facebook or TikTok. You know. Um, so I've just wondered if you've you've noticed that or not. I, I know what's happened. The signs are great. They look they look spectacular. The signs they really do. Um, but sorry, I'm getting off the track. So is that metal art sign being funded or? It's already um, it's already made. Okay. It's sitting down at the depot. Right. Um, yeah. So just a location. So we were either thinking at the entrance, maybe when when that Phoenix Farms removed, put the sign there. Or uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we weren't hundred percent sure. We didn't want to clutter clutter down there. That was the other thought because there was quite a few signs down there already. That could be so something as you're coming up the hill, or yeah. Or the other thought was maybe on top of Pank Hill. Might be nice. Um, yeah, we we'll probably can confirm location and bring it back to the governance committee. Okay. Yes, thanks. Okay. Um, oh, Mount Wesley Cemetery, that'll stormwater, that'll just be a ongoing investigation. Um, I believe it's part of the reserve management plan. It's sort of come out of there. We've had a 
proposal received from Kaipara Libraries for a story walk request. Um, that was attachment B. Um, yeah. Um, is able to. I told her I'd bring it to this governance meeting first, see what you thought, and if you wanted to the idea, and she'll proceed in getting further information, and she can report to the next governance committee meeting. Just through the chair, that story, would that be the, the story start in town and come all the way out? No, so I, yeah. I understand it'll be storyboards in the park and they're, they're interchangeable so you can put different stories in, like you can remove it and put another story in. It's, I believe it's like pages of a book on each board. And you walk, you do the walkway, and you read the story as you go. Okay. Mm. Hi. Would, would that page? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Is that the attachment B with all that proposal? Yes. Right. Page ten. Is that? Yep. So, would one of the signs or the storybook pages? Be associated with a view telling us about that view? I think it's more related to books. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a sort of, it's not a sort of, it is just a walk it's, and read the book rather than a walk to see the views and the yeah. plane. Okay, thank you. They often have them at Tahawa Garden, I think, and mm. events on, they do those story walks. Yeah. So mm. it's that same sort of thing. Removal of fences, so that's just going. So we did remove, we have removed um, a wire fence that was sort of going through the mountain track area. Um, that would just progress as we continue to do maintenance or any features in the park. School collaboration, uh, Dargaville High School have um, a keen to support some work at the park. So we're just working with them on what we could do in that space. Um, vegetation management. Yeah, we're doing further pest plant review and removal, spraying. Uh, we're looking into maintenance of the mountain bike track area um, and hopefully bring that under uh, routine contract work. That's operations. We've done no, no capital works at the park for this reporting period planned capital works we are looking into i'm still waiting for a quote for the installation of the boardwalk which was around by the stormwater pond area that was when that water runoff was coming through um completing more of old mount wesley um picket fence um, Old oh, Mount Wesley Cemetery was water reciprocal. That's going to be done when the fence is complete. Walking linkages. We are looking at putting another additional link uh, down by Old Mount Wesley Cemetery by the roadway that will link to those um, car parking area under the uh, liquid amber trees at the entrance there. So instead of having to walk out onto the road to go around to your car, you can just walk through the through the field there. Capital. And we've got our financial summary there. Year to date to January. Is there anything that stands out differently than what you'd budgeted for in the previous reports, or is it all pretty on on target? It's all pretty on target. Uh, we'll probably have a bit of a bump for vegetation and arborist maintenance for these next couple of months. Um, we sort of knew that was going to happen, didn't we? Uh, which is what we wanted anyway. For additional wattle removal, 
Um, and then we'll have capital spend, which won't show on this because this is operational budgets only. The one thing I've got to ask about the high school um, involvement there, um, I hope they're not going to be used as um, cheap or slave labour to remove these wattles. Um, I would assume there'd be much more, it'd probably be cost neutral when they come here because there'd be extra supervision that is required for them. Am I correct there? Or? Uh, we have all health and safety documents, um, so that will be part of that. It may be a school supervision, so not so much council supervision. Um, but no, probably not so much. We have had a chainsaw course here in the past, um, but you know that was yeah. I don't know if that course is still going. I haven't had any contact about that. But I think in as we give them an area, possibly the stormwater area pond around there. They they do a bit of um, weed maintenance. They make plant plans. Planting, yeah. Plant, purchase the plants, plant them. Yeah. I think I just didn't want them being used, sort of just to yeah. wattle trees and yeah. Um, I, yeah, we want them to be doing something creative as well. So mm -hmm. yes. Chair, um, on water removal. Um, I was told they, they, when they become too big, they can't be pulled out by hand. So what you are proposing is just chop them off and keep them in the ground? So you, we chop them and then they paste them, paste the stumps because they regenerate from the stumps. So you have to paste. So you don't take the stump out anymore? No, not no, because they're usually only so big. Um, I just had a question on financials and you being on budget. Um, so. I think the last uh, committee meeting we were presented a total budget amount of 100 or 1000, I think it was whatever. 118. Then uh, the figure we spent was similar. Um, so you are telling me that nothing has been spent in these three months or is it February you spent everything? Because it's still January, right? This is year to date. So this is from June to January, these costs. But the whole month of February, because what I suspect is action is happening just like a week ago. So is a, is I've finished the work, but the money is yet to be paid. Yeah. So February is not showing. This is only yeah, that's January. Fine. Yeah. So in your next report, you should have okay. higher figures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chair, <clears throat> just a question. Um, the water supply is that like? Um, what's the, can you explain that? So the toilets supplied there. Um, From that possibly is it. Where is that from? Like, uh, what are we? Water mains, council water mains. Oh, right. Yeah. So our water. So we. Help. So it's basically water rates. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually higher than the reservoirs, aren't we? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's pumping. Just, just. There's a water main uh, in that corner. Yeah, that runs along. Mm. That feeds off Gulf Force Road, so we connect off that one. So there's no actual tanks on site. Water tanks. There is that no, there's not. There is a tank on top of the hill, but that's the museum's tank. Oh, yes. uh, and I'm not 100 percent how that system works. I'm just asking. Yeah. yeah, I think it gives them additional pressure. That's why they have that tank in place. Yeah, that's uh, I thought because we're actually higher than the reservoirs up um, in the Hokianga Road, apparently. Yeah. So I, that's what I believe that was. Is, yeah. Yeah. Just then, um, so we're getting town supply. On yeah, that's yeah we're on town supply. Yeah. So, so that's pumped. To, I, I don't think it's pumped. It's actually probably the head that's driving it to. Yeah. Costing yeah. mm. us fifty bucks a week. So through this, um, just one uh, last. This palm tree is still there. I was told um, in the two meetings before is going. What is it? Something stopping it, or what is it? Um, we'll yeah, we'll see. Cover it off, but you, maybe you want to cover it again. Just we're just waiting for the contractor. Scheduling date and when they can get in and remove it. So yeah, it has been approved to be removed. Um, but yeah, we're still just waiting on. So can't we use any other? Because that's the thing which really uh, disturbs me. That uh, we come to three meetings and things that haven't happened. Uh, we talked about um, chair talked about um, um, having a caretaker here look after this thing. At some point, it's a good idea. And we should use local contractors. I mean, if you are relying on downer, and I mean, honestly, we all know things are not happening. So, there, being in a committee, if we are ineffective, I don't think there is much purpose in being that. 
that's just my comment. Mm. Yeah. I can look at um, a different contractor if you like. However, oh, sorry, I was just going to say three chair. Look, it, it's planned for uh, this month, so let, let us okay. go on and do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And, and the subject of where the future is going, we've got to make sure that we um, continue with the contract, which we're obliged to here at present. Um, the first thing is, is ensuring that the contract is fulfilled as we envisaged and they envisaged it is. And I think there's been tremendous progress made in the last month or so on that, in that area. Mm. So um, I'm not prepared to really rock the boat at this stage. I, I don't know how the rest of the committee feel about it, but um, um, I think there's been tremendous progress being made. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the Phoenix Palm removal, it is hurt with health and safety issues, Phoenix Palm removal. Um, so it's... It's going to be the problem. Yeah, it's not just uh, local guys coming in there or even council staff doing it. There's certain things that have got to be done right. Um, because they are very dangerous. It's It'll need traffic management just because of the location. Um, then we also picked up that there's a wild and pine in that property next door at the entrance, um, which may cause some issues as I'd, well. So I still believe that um, Starship Hospital, most admissions are from Phoenix Palm throngs getting into children. Mm. It's, so um, it is a very, very dangerous operation moving it. So there's a lot of self and safety issues there. We'll move on. Just through you, Chair, before we move on. Um, Councillor Mayor has just forwarded um, some questions. I'm assuming member of the public, would you like us to do these now or put them in writing? If you have the answer, that would be awesome. Then we don't have to wait two months. But if you cannot, you can reply later on. Is it something that Jesse should be concerned with? Or is it? Yep. Affordable, Jesse. Do, how would you like to handle this, Jesse? Would you like to respond to these now? And well, I can call you back to the. Okay, so I, so I read through it and then you can call me back? Yeah. Yep. That's unfair to dump that on you and <laughs> ask you to come up with answers straight away. Uh, I'm trying to read that. Is that all for me? Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Very good report, by the way. Right. Um, we've done all the voting on that, haven't we? No. No. To move the statement. Oh, right. I need a mover for that statement from Jesse. So we've got a we've got a mover. They just get to have their statement. Oh, right. The mover. Right. Who is Councillor Naya? Naya. Would you like to say anything? No, all I would like to say, um, as I said before, is um, the purpose of our being on a committee is to actually make things happen. And uh, we should all work towards how we can make it happen. And we should look at more and more ways. Um, I remember uh, um, our um, um, Matua, Henry Holyoke, um, presented some options whereby we can use um, workers from the forestry training course and all those things. Um, so we should come out with new ideas and make things happen. That's all the purpose of this committee is. Um, so uh, I would say better progress next time will be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy with all that. Robert, do you have anything? And, and nothing from me, I think I've said it all. And just um, the movers write a reply. Uh, okay. And do I vote that through now? And so all those in favour of the report? Aye. 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 Those against? Carried. Item five. Because I've pushed it so hard, I will be the mover of that. Licensed to occupy and leases within Harding Park. Can I have a seconder, please? I can second it. Councillor Mayor and Fleur, Property and Commercial Coordinator. Thank you. Jimmy. Sorry. <laughs> We've got Fleur and John Burt, Fleur Denise and John Burt. Right. Thank you. Fine as well. So, um, hello everyone. I'm Jenny and um, I'm here today to present the report on the licence to occupy um, 
and leases within Harding Park. Some information paper, so it's information about the licensee of the park. Within the context of the report, you'll see there's a table which outlines which organisations are here, their types of agreements, their current tenure and right of renewal, and any responsibilities that they may have. We've also included a map for you so that you're able to see. Um, we've GIS'd it, so it's, it's draft, but it, I mean, it shows you where um, each of the licensees are within the park, so you can see the area that's their responsibility, and then outside of that, council's responsibility. Although I did hear today from Jesse that council does actually do a lot of the maintenance, the mowing of the park, and the, each of the licensees are responsible for their gardens and their garden maintenance, as opposed to um, the, the actual mowing of the areas. Uh, so I take it that you've all read the report and I've either myself, John or Fleur are able to answer questions that you may have about the report. Um, well, I'll start the ball rolling. Um, my first question, and just to, it's just confirmation, it's probably staring me right in the eye there, which it is, but um, the two big players, the Northern Warro, um Museum, or the museum, I should say, and the Machinery Club. Um, they've got another two years of their second 20 year lease. Am I correct there? Two years? The museum actually expired on the 31st of August 2046. Right, okay, so that clears that up. The Machinery Club is August 2026. I'll just get. I'll just check with John that I'm right on the machinery club. Uh, it's through the chair. I believe that's correct. It was a shorter term. Um, Can't hear you, John. You're on. Um, I could hear John from my side, uh, so I'm not sure if it's something. Yeah, can you can you hear me now? Yep. Sorry, John. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Uh, through through the chair. Um, yes, that's correct. The um, Machinery Club was a shorter tenure. The um, the museum <clears throat> originally had a lease, and when it came to the end of the first term of the lease, they were converted over to uh, a license to occupy for the remaining tenure of the. Um, what could have been the um, former lease, so that's why it's such a long period. Thank you, John. Now I understand that wasn't adding up for me. Um, the likelihood of the um, machinery club um, going to the same arrangement as the museum is that likely, or has it been looked at, or when a lease expires through the chair, when a lease expires, then we move them over to a license to occupy. So we've that's the type of template that we use, that means that all organisations have the same um, conditions and terms. So we're expecting that with the Machinery Club, a licence to occupy, and, and that's for that allocated area. And I'm just confirming that again with John, but yes. Yeah, that would be, um, based on our current policy, it would be the intention, yes. And now if the, um, the Bell South the telecommunication side is pretty self-explanatory, being a commercial operation like that, that'll be just a standard commercial lease to occupy that. However, the Kuiper Cycling Incorporated, could you explain a little bit about that, what's happened there with open-ended leases? Through the chair, so when the Kuiper Cycling um, actually started building their tracks, their funding was through KDC, through our Reserves Contributions Fund, and also through PGF through the Provincial Growth Fund. So at the time, um, the Parks and Reserves Committee, or Parks and Reserves Group gave them a memorandum of understanding with the undertaking that they would enter into a licence to occupy with us. So we're at the stage now, so Fleur and I have been working with Park Recycling to um, get them onto a licence to occupy, So that, but that um, is a procedure that we need to go through um, and make sure that we actually take that to council for permission as well. So that will give them the tenure, a tenure as other organisations in, in the park. So then would they be responsible for the maintenance of that or would there be some maintenance clause that we would still look after it? 
Uh, yes, through to you, my understanding, we met with them today and um, Parks Jesse from Parks and Reserves confirmed that Council would do some of the major mow the mowing and any tree maintenance from a safety point of view, and the Cope Recycling would be responsible for doing like, you know, your basic EG, not, not spraying, the, our contractors would do the spraying, but any planting or any beautification and keeping it um, and their tracks, tracks up to the condition that they should be. Okay. And just before I move um, to Councillor Mayor, now all of the other organisations are either subleases or there is no lease in place. And I'm talking about the, um, well, to a Sue's ones there, the, the, the Angels of Mount Wesley and the Genealogy Society, or if I've got the correct names, or that they are subleases or just no agreement? No agreements in place. They're informal voluntary groups that work within the, within the Harding Park itself. Okay. Is there any others that we've missed? Not to my knowledge. Is there any from your knowledge, John or Fleur, of other voluntary uh, No, no, no other voluntary groups that I'm aware of. Obviously, there's um, a sub obviously a sub license that the museum's provided to Radio Rima because that was discussed um, earlier in the meeting. Yes, yes, thank you, John. And if everything goes according to plan for um, Mr. Woods, there'll be another one for the radio station, I assume. Yeah. Um, yes. The... Just, just through the chair, um, while we're talking about the radio station, there has been an, uh, another approach which will come to the committee in due course from uh, Cordia, who's working uh, on behalf of um, the government to establish a, a network of um, emergency radio transmitting sites. And they are interested in placing a 15 metre tower on um, on the park. Uh, they've been told that they we require further assessment of that before we would bring it to the committee. So, but that will potentially come in the future. Thank you. I thanks for the work done here. It makes it very clear on who we've got up here and 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 what they've got. So, thank you very much. Councillor May, you had a question. Yeah, I just said it. Um, you, you asked half of it anyway on the maintenance part. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the clarity um, with Kaipura cycling and the concept in terms of which part is to be maintained by you, um, is it easy to operate? Because I think um, the, I, I was speaking to Seri um, the other day. I'm just thinking. Is it not better that one person looks after that patch rather than this is council and this is us? Through the chair, we we had a meeting prior to the meeting today, so we were on site with, with our contractors and um, Sadie and her group, and it's much safer and clearer now um, on who's responsible for doing which maintenance. I don't think it has been clear until now, and in, in respect for Sadie and her group, it's probably on us that we haven't been as clear. So, um, yeah, so now I think going forward, we, um, the, the actual tracks will be mapped so that the contractors will know where the tracks are um, and they'll keep in contact with each other in terms of when workers have been done. So That's great. it'll be much more streamlined now. Thanks for that. Yeah. Good. I think we're beating ourselves up a little bit on Achieving, but by rattling that cave, we've probably achieved more than what we realise. I think, haven't we? Yes. That'd be a fair statement. Yes, definitely. Excellent. Through the what? chair. Um, what a license to occupy um, for the Kaip Recycling Club? Would they have that whole? Would they have the license over that whole area, or do they have the license of the tracks? That's what we would determine. Um, that would cut. We would do the work and determine. And I clarify with John, but bring it back to you as the governance committee, so that you're clear on what they're actually entering into a license to occupy for. Usually, it's a one metre curtilage around the area, and it'd probably be more than likely John a one metre curtilage around their tracks. What I would say. Yeah, just, just through the chair. Just through the chair. It's. I think the the problem in the part uh, up till now has been there's been uncertainty about who's responsible for what. Um, when we bring it bring the matter back to council uh, to the committee for for um, potentially a recommendation to council to to uh, grant a LTO, we would make that 
uh, clear. And I, I think you've got to be realistic with community groups and what they're actually able to do and achieve. So I think just the tracks itself would be something that they would be responsible for. And the area around it would remain with council would, would probably be the, by the sound of it, the, the best solution for the, for the park and for the community group. Thank you, John. I'm, I'm sort of on the same feeling um, with that and that there are some other vacant bits of land there that if you wanted to do another activity which didn't interfere with the track, you'd still have the ability to do that. Yes. So, um, yes. And, it, and it highlights the area that they are responsible for and what. Yes, thank you. Well, um, done. Thank you. Anyone knows uh, through the chair um, these tracks are being utilized because they made a huge track somewhere in Babylon Coast Road or something like that. So, so is this being used? Yes. Yeah, so my understanding, um, Councillor, is that um, this is very much a, a learner's intermediate track, and the one up at Babylon Coast Road is a full-fledged um, adult competition one. Um, and um, school groups can use this one, so they do complement each other, from my understanding. Thank you. Um, so, um, now on that, um, right, we'll move on from that. And um, I have the right to speak, and I've spoken enough already. And the seconder was, uh, do you have anything to say? In yeah, I think I have said enough as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else has anything they want to say? And me, the mover, to write a reply. Like I said before, I think we're beating ourselves up a little bit. But we are achieving things here, so we need to sort of uh, stop being too hard on ourselves, really, because we can start, um, yeah, moving on. Thank you. So um, we'll vote on that. Get all those in favour of the passing it. Um, as against, carried. Thank you. The last item, is it? No, we've got one to sneak in now. But just uh, if you allow, I was just thinking, I mean, um, can probably um, up, just speak. He hasn't spoken at all. Um, just to update us um, anything or any challenges he's facing in terms of um, our committee or any suggestions. Yeah, no, thank you, Councillor, and through you. Um, uh, there's, there's no real um, challenges here, I guess. I do take on board the limited funds we have and the great amount of tasks we need to do. Um, so that, that's always going to be a challenge. And I think we've sort of heard through um, the various council LTP um, sessions that let's use local contractors um, as well. So that's something that we will uh, do. The challenge is just balancing that with health and safety. Um, uh, health and safety um, ob obligations. So, um, no. Other than that, I think I think, I think we as you say we we often beat ourselves up and don't thank ourselves. So, um, I think there is a bit of a slow progress when it comes to how the weed control and weed management. Though. So, um, but you will see some some effort um, in the coming months. And look, it's going to have to, um, if I was to be honest, you know, increased to stay on top of it. Um, so that's something that I'll need to work through if budget becomes an issue. Yeah, it becomes very difficult when we have a council meeting up here and say we want to increase the budget and things haven't been maintained yet. It's, that's a very hard sell for us to other councillors. So on on that, thank you very much, um, Helen. Um, yeah, Jesse, are you able to reply to that or? Yeah, I can. Um, or you don't want to or? You <laughs> Them already. But you can send a formal, that's better actually. Yeah. yeah. We will, I'll send it to them, you know, that's better. Just, just through you, Chair, um, I think Jesse's right. We've covered the gate, covered the security. Um, the ceiling of the car park, I mean, I do acknowledge that it is a great initiative, um, but you know, the council has already seen that on the committee challenges we're facing with our um, the LTP budget. So, unfortunately, for this uh, period, there will be no provision for sealing of the car park. It is a recovery budget that we've set aside for the next three years. Um, that's something that we will be communicating to our, uh, our community through the consultation process. So, um, but what we should do is put it on a future um, work program, Jesse, maybe year four. Yeah, I think it has been flagged um, there. However, um, you know, we are also looking to be more efficient in how we deliver 
um, our services. So, you know, if funds do become surplus, um, we can look to bring this um, on. So, what's to say it's not allocated? Um, you know, there's, there's an opportunity if we have got some surplus money just through being more efficient to put this one and get it sealed. Um, we could also look at cunning sort of things like it. No, I heard it's mentioned that um, another agency wants to put something up here. Well, maybe they'd like to contribute to the sealing or maintenance, yeah. something of like that, yeah. um, rather than giving us a monetary return. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they, they were probably more concerned about sealing happening when the events are happening rather than the sealing itself. Uh, that, uh, if I read it right, um, it's just the timing of it. Yeah. The way I read it, councillors, that they're saying that um, there's out of town visitors who, you know, obviously come in there, they good clothes and trees get dirty with all the dust. They would like to see it sealed. Yeah. Because uh, currently it's it's not. Okay. And as I said to you, it's, it's not in this three year LTP. Yeah. And we'll provision it for future. But there's nothing stopping us for if we were looking to um, group a whole lot of car parks, you know. And we've got some efficiencies, um, and this could be accommodated within okay. that. Certainly, what to do. That's great. And if I get it right, um, I think all, all the three items are literally on security. And I wonder why why can't we just put a combination lock? Um, well, let's talk about it. That, that, that was the original idea. What's wrong in there? I mean, you have the numbers, and everybody has the numbers. And mm. go ahead. Thank you. Mm. No. Access was the main issue with a person living on site here um, and emergency service, but that was the original. Well, the emergency services will also have the combination lock. Mm. Yeah, well, well, I'm, I'm very much on the thought we'll try softly, softly with the closing of the gate and we'll see if the problem depreciates. If the problem still arises, then we'll look at that as we come to it. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, this yeah. may work. It's plenty of obstacles. Yeah. Well, look at two months, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Yes. Right. I think we've covered off everything, so I'll call the meeting close, and I'll get Henry to um, send us on there. Unless anybody has anything else, so no. Okay. Thank you, Henry. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.